Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, our channel, The Vix. <laughs> I don't know what to call it, this channel anymore because I feel like it's only one part of The Vix that is actually here. But anyway, you guys know it as The Vix and so welcome to The Vix. My name is Tiri Vix and I'm sitting with Katleho Matena. I hope I'm saying your surname correctly. Correct. Yes, there you go. <laughs> uh, and for those of you that were actually on our live last week, last week being the 6th of August. Was it the 4th? Was it the 4th? I think it was the fourth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't get my data. My data getting confused. <laughs> but for those of you that were on our live, you will not be surprised to see us together here because we did say we we're gonna record a video. But you know, sometimes Linda, I know it's it's a bit tricky, you know, to trust me because you know a video can take three months to come. But you know, I'd be trying. We're trying, and we're here, and we're gonna essentially talk about most of the things that we spoke about on the live. The only difference is that we're going to talk about it on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. And for all of those that were there in the live, you remember our connection problems. But because of that, we are here. So actually, I think it's a good thing that we had connection problems because we would not be here yeah. if we were fine. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, today we're going to be speaking to Gatleho. And Gatleho is a district public prosecutor. I have to say it correctly. Yes. Yes. District public prosecutor. <laughs> and she works for the... National Prosecuting Authority, NPA. And for those of you that are South African, the NPA is like the prosecuting authority of South Africa, right? Yes. And um, I think I'll, I'll just start off by just saying the reason why even I approached Katako to do this video. And I remember approaching her and telling her that I really want someone that is in the, I don't want to say a different field of law, but that is not an advocate, not a attorney, because I feel like I've done so many interviews of people that are in that field, and now it's like starting to see that that's the kind of the only route to law, and it's not, you know, we've seen that it's not. And so I really thought it was important to have someone that is doing something different, you know, and she's, uh, as I said, she's a, she's a public prosecutor, what is the difference between a, a, a district public prosecutor and a public prosecutor, actually? No, actually, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. But okay. um, so today we're going to be having a conversation with her and we're going to just be discussing about how she became a, a public prosecutor and, 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 and what that entails, right? And I think this is a very important conversation because I think that the notion of, of saying there's two kind of routes to law it's either you're an advocate, it's either you're an attorney, is incorrect because there's so many routes to law. And I think it's important for people to be informed about how to get there and to actually see people that have done that, you know what I mean? So that's the reason for this for this video, more than anything. We're going to get straight into it. Um, uh, yeah, we're going to get straight into it and we're going to just um, have a conversation, as you know, very chilled, very relaxed. Don't be nervous. Eh? I told you the same thing about YouTube anyway. <laughs> and if she was not nervous, it went really, really good. Instagram. That's why. Instagram. Yes, yes, Instagram. And as I as we started off on Instagram. Yeah. First question I like to ask is your reason behind even studying law. What informed that reason? Was it did you have like a rich aunt somewhere and you were like ah, i want to be like my rich aunt Ooh, because she's I got wish. money <laughs> and she's a lawyer and i want to be a lawyer for that or what was your reason for becoming a lawyer okay so um okay i'm a person who who loves fairness i'm a person who is basically irked by unfairness injustice and i think growing up in south africa growing up in the communities that we grow up in mm -hmm. we experience a lot of injustice we, we experience a lot of exploitation mm -hmm. and you just see that like the defeat on people's faces when they're like you know mm -hmm. what i mean like mm -hmm. you're being exploited and it's so normalized that you don't have the knowledge you don't have any information on how you can stand up for yourself yeah so i like to solve problems and mm -hmm. i cannot stand unfairness mm -hmm. what other way to do to 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 help to yeah. make a difference than to go through the law route so, so your reason behind doing law was because you realized the injustice and the unfairness that people experience in your in your community. Yes. But in realizing that unfairness, like what what triggered you to say instead of being a policewoman, for example, why did you want to be a lawyer? Who who kind of gave you that information to say, oh, why don't you look into law? Yeah. And then you started researching it. Why? Yeah. Who who was that person? Or what was that thing that could say to you? Let me look into this career okay so growing up as a very argumentative person as a 
I'm very outspoken mm. and I love to stand up for people. Yeah. So you 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 always like grow up with that. You must be a lawyer. Whenever you like to debate, mm. you like to this. You must grow up and be a lawyer, mm. right? You get to grade nine where you have to pick your subjects. subjects yes. Not yes. elective subjects. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just be clear. <laughs> clear. For like clarity. 10, 11, yes. you pick your subjects. So you obviously do like research yeah. on what career you would you see yourself doing on a daily basis yeah so i would like be on google researching what exactly do lawyers do mm. um stuff like that mm. right mm. and then i was like yeah no i think this is this is the route that i have to take mm. and i knew that i wanted to be an advocacy because what other way to stand up for the people mm. and mm. i come across a lot of people who like people don't know like mm. they really don't know their rights they don't know that Basically, every faction of our life is governed by certain laws and rules and whatever. Mm. They don't know how to protect themselves. So it's also like an area of interest for me. Like, mm. oh, okay, there's laws governing tax. Mm. There's laws governing such and such. So mm. it was like, yeah, it okay. makes sense. No, that, make, that makes sense. So then you choose subjects in grade 9 and then obviously grade 10, 11, 12. Yeah. Um, it's time to now choose universities. Yes. Where do you want to land up? Where do you want to go? And how does how do you how do you go about making the decision of where you're gonna study, and why do you choose the institution that you go to? Yeah, which will tell you guys what that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I went to Pearson Institute of Higher Education. Mm. That's where I did my first degree, the BCom Law, right? Mm. Obviously, that was not my first option. Mm. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of us want to go to like reputable public institutions, yeah. um, like your VITS, UCT, your VITS, yeah. UCT, yeah. UP, you know, the Stellenbosch. Because mm. I mean, they're very reputable. So a lot of firms actually look for people who went to like institutions like that. Or maybe that was the notion that we had growing up. That mm -hmm. no firms, they want people who work, who work like who went to VITS. They want people who went to UCT or mm. whatever. Mm. So you want to land up at an institution like that. But then there's issues with like space, late applications. Sometimes your marks are not um, on the level that you want them to be. Yeah. So with me, it was it was an issue of space mostly, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to take a gap year. I was mm. really not interested in taking a gap year. Mm. I was on a mission. Yeah. I had yeah. a timeline for myself, so mm. I was like, mm -mm, I can't afford to waste a year. Okay. So then I applied to a private a private institution. Yeah. They also did have LLB. Yes. Which was Unisa. Um, it was the Unisa curriculum, Unisa study material. They just offered classes. Yes. Because Unisa doesn't offer classes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So yeah, I did the BCom Law first, mm -hmm. and then. Once I obtained that, I did my LLB with Unisa. Okay. And I think the, the, question, the next question that comes into mind is that, okay, so you say you wanted to go to a reputable university, yes. you know? And obviously that, 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 that doesn't happen at the time. So then you go to Pearson Institute and you do your undergrad there. Yes. But when you're there, and I think th this, this question stems a lot from questions that people say i'm at varsity college or yes. i'm at whatever college mm. and i'm doing an llb or a ba or a pcom what are my chances of even applying at bowman's or what are my chances of becoming an advocate and being successful in the career you know so don't you now have those conversations with yourself to say okay i'm working i'm passing yeah but am i going to have a job it, it was a concern. Yeah. It was a concern because, like I said, we, we grew up with the notion that firms look for people who went to, like, these reputable institutions. Mm. Um, but then you get in there, you obviously have to work hard. It's your yes. work that's going to speak for itself. Your yes. results are going to speak for themselves. But also, like, the institution that I went to, yes. they have, like, a, a work-integrated learning program. So they okay. do help you, like, look for work and stuff like that. Okay. So I think... Part of the reason I wasn't too worried yeah. was that, and also I knew that for my LLB I was going to go to a public institution. Okay. So it okay. balanced out the equation. Should okay. there be concerns? Yeah. Okay. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. So yes. you do your undergrad. Uh, you said it was a BCom, ne? BCom, Lawrence. BCom, and then after that you decide to go to UNISA. What is the reason behind the change in the institution instead of staying at PS? Because you said that they had a um, an LLB program. Yes. Why did you decide to then go to UNISA, which doesn't have classes, right? No, they don't. Yeah. Why did you decide that? Okay. Um, had I not been fresh out of high school in, yeah. the, in, like, in the beginning, I probably would have just gone to UNISA straight away mm. or whatever. Mm. But, um, okay, firstly, the fees at a private institution. <laughs> <laughs> no, please tell us because we don't <laughs> know. <laughs> no, it's a lot. Yeah. No, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, 
Yo, is I it wait? I, I is don't it like a lot? Exact numbers, but it's it's a lot. Is it a lot compared to, for example, if you go to UJ? Let's say, yeah. for example, UJ, I'm not sure how much it, it is to do an LLP. Let's I'm yeah. gonna put like a benchmark, twenty five thousand rand yeah. at UJ. Is it like way more than that? It's probably or is the be same? Twice that amount. It will be twice that amount. So yeah, I'm not saying if it's fifty, then PSL would be a hundred. Yeah, yeah, like, I hear you. It's, I it's, hear it's, you. It's, it's, a it's a lot of money. Yeah, okay. it's a okay. lot of money. Um, but also. I didn't want to like prolong my stay at the institution because had I wanted to do my LLB via Pearson, I just would have registered LLB from the get-go mm -hmm. instead of become law and LLB, right? Mm -hmm. So I knew that once I've once I've gotten used to like workload, like varsity workload, the mm -hmm. content and stuff like that, I would manage to to then be a, to do distance learning. By UNISA. Right? Yes. Yeah. So that was part of the reason why. But I also didn't want to continue with a, with a private institution. Mm, like that for me was like, mm -mm, no. You also wanted to work, man. Like, you know. So, so when you were at UNISA, you had a part time job? I had a full time job. I was a part time student. <laughs> I don't yeah. know how people do that. Um, Please, can you just help me with my LLM? Because I don't know how I'm managing. Ponzi, my guys. Girl, girl, I'm also just trying to register. Ooh. we'll get to that one. yeah yeah we'll get to that one um it, it, it was a lot i yeah. remember in my my last semester of my final year i actually resigned i was like mm -mm. i want to finish on a good note mm. i can't be getting 60s and 70s here i want to mm. finish strong because like i said your work speaks for itself you mm. know what i mean i think for me the the, the biggest thing is if you want to stand a chance, you have to stand out. Mm. Like you, you can't just say, oh, say for, okay, get past it. Mm. But like, what is the quality of that, that pass? How much? And it doesn't does matter it the institution, right? It doesn't matter whether it was UNISA it really or it was. Doesn't. And I think this goes back to something that I can't remember who said it to me. The way, the way they were saying, someone was saying, well, you know, I th I'm at UNISA and I work and I've got, you know, all these other commitments. And then I, I think it was Botali. Mm. And she then said, she they had just recently hired someone from UNISA at Bowman's and she said that lady had a full-time job she was working she had three kids she had so many things going on yeah. in her life mm -hmm. but she was getting A's so you don't you can't have excuses that's kind no. of the thing of you know like you can't say yeah I got a 50 because I was working there's there's, there's another person in this very same situation yeah. as you yeah. that is working that yeah. has got this and this and this and this but yeah. they've got the marks you know you see the thing with law the thing with law is you can't if you if you are i don't know how to put it but yeah. if you're a person who's just like content with putting in minimal effort mm. you, you can't really go the long the long haul right. um i think a lot of the things that i realized is that a lot of the studying when it comes to law doesn't come from your energy it doesn't come from intelligence it comes from passion mm. so you have to really love what you're doing you mm. have to really do you know you know how big those books are yeah. like do you know how much content there is in Girl, there? i know like mm. sometimes the words don't even look like they form real sentences because mm. you can have a sentence this long mm. and it's one sentence so it, it's honestly your drive and your passion that push you to 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 study and to put in the effort so if you're gonna Mm. make excuses and look at circumstances and stuff stuff like that you can't really then blame the institution that you went to i hear you i hear you okay yeah. cool so just out of my own interest when you were at unisa so your llp was how many years um so when you have a bcom law degree llb with unisa should be two two and a half years okay because you take five modules at a time so with my degree i think we did llb has 40 modules now I, I think the total of 40. Yeah. <laughs> so with the Pearson degree, we only did like the private laws. Okay. Your company, no, not company law, um, labor law, mm. we did family law, mm. that stuff. Mm -hmm. So with UNISA, I think it was supposed to be two and a half years. Mm -hmm. But mine went on for three years because I think in 2018, mm -hmm. they changed their curriculum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was an issue with the curriculum, so we had to deregister some modules because mm -hmm. they were being changed. And that's how it ended up then taking three, three years. years. Okay, yes. cool. Okay, cool. So then you, in your final year at UNISA, and at which point do you, not even final year, but at which point during your time of studying, whether it's at Pearson or at UNISA, do you, do you decide, or not even tell, but do you start thinking about like work opportunities, where you're gonna work, uh, what do you want to do for the rest of your life, or maybe not even for the rest of your life, but for the next 
a uh, foreseeable five years. future. Yes, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So when do you start thinking about those opportunities and when do you start then applying for those opportunities yeah. that you are considering? So I think from the jump, from the moment I registered for my LLB, mm. I was now looking into firms, I was looking into all sorts of avenues also because you you can't like just rely on one route, mm. you know? Um, and I think as I was doing like the modules that this is when I started doing criminal law introduction to criminology stuff like that yeah I also then started developing an interest in criminal law because mm. like all along I was just like yo I don't see myself working in criminal law mm, the, mm. yo gang yo they're gonna kill me yo mm. you, you understand mm. so as you learn about the stuff and you read the work you 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 apply it to everyday life you're like yo that's very interesting mm. right mm. um but okay Sorry, I'm just digressing. No, it's fine. fine. Um, that that was from the from the very get go. Mm -hmm. I had I had a job. Yeah. Right. Yes. It was it had nothing to do with law. Yes. Yeah. It had nothing to do with law, but I was looking at firms. I was looking at whoever I knew who did law. You know, asking around. How did you go about this? How do you go about that? Mm -hmm. um, you wanna volunteer wherever you can. Stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I think from the get go because. It's, it's, a, it's a competitive field. Mm. A lot of people want to get into law. Yeah, you know, no, definitely. So whatever you can you can use to boost your CV yes. or yourself, yeah. also like to get knowledge that will make you stand out, you do it whenever you can. Yeah. So VAC work, anything like mm. that, you start looking into it. But um, towards the end of my degree, mm. uh, that was when I started taking, like, not started taking an interest, but like I looked more into criminal law and whatever mm. so yeah i actually have an uncle who's got a friend who, who's an attorney mm. so yeah he's he's obviously like a defense lawyer then mm -hmm. i would like talk to him stuff like that you mm. know get whatever knowledge that i can okay so, yeah. okay cool so so you were basically doing your research from your ve the very beginning of your yeah LLA. Okay. LLM. LLM. i receive i'm <laughs> giving it to you bro <laughs> take you. it take it <laughs> okay, so you start doing your research and you, you know, you start looking around and do you start applying at that point or are you still just doing your research? And if you were applying, were you getting offers? Were you getting rejection letters? What was the situation there? Your silence, girl. <laughs> you were getting so, silence even. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you, you apply for stuff like vacation work. Yes. Um, there's also firms where you have to apply like two years in advance. Mm. So, you mm. know, well, like I'm not going to name names, mm. but there's big firms where you have to send in applications two years in advance. Mm. So, yeah, I, I, I did send applications, mm. actually. I did mm. send applications. Funny enough, I only ever got one interview for Arctic. Oh, okay. One. Out of all the applications, one interview. I'm not laughing <laughs> because I know, I know, I know, I know the reality. Um, actually, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's very competitive. It guys. is. It's very competitive. Okay, cool. And then, when do you start having the? So you, so you're saying, okay, no, you're interested in criminal law and all the all of that. Mm. But when do you start considering being a, 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 a prosecutor? And like, where, like, how did that interest come about? Uh, okay, the interest is there because mm. I like trial advocacy. Yeah, and I I I developed an interest in not just um, serving justice and seeing that justice is served. Yeah. And yo, I must connect dots and solve mysteries and solve cases and all of that. Mm. But also, when you do criminology, they basically that's about the criminal. Mm. Now I'm interested in knowing how the criminal mind works. Mm. Like, so you're like, okay, yo, these are just people, man. Mm. Like they're people. Who commit crimes, who commit crimes yeah, right? Yeah. You, like I'm very interested in knowing all of that stuff. So did I know I would end up in prosecution? Yeah. I didn't because it's it's again the stereotype that you or the belief that mm, getting into government is is very difficult. Mm. It's near impossible. You must have connections. You must have this. I didn't have connections. Mm. I didn't have connections. Mm. So yeah, but 2020 mm. when the NPA advertised posts for the aspirant prosecutor program. Mm. A friend of mine sent it to me. She's like, dude, take your chances. And I was like, oh. And were you done at Junis at this time? Um or you were yes. finishing off? I think I think I had finished. Okay. I had finished. Because I finished 2019. Okay. Yeah, okay. I had finished. But you don't necessarily have to be like done in order to apply. Okay. So you can be in your final year as okay. long as you've done law of evidence, your criminal law and criminal procedure. Okay. Okay. I think civil procedure as well. 
But yeah, as long as you've done those modules and yeah. you're in your final year, okay. you can actually apply for the Aspirin Prosecutor Program. Okay. So I was done. Mm. I applied, and I remember it was in February. I sent the application on the last day. Because, mm. mm. <laughs> I mean, since 2015, they hadn't advertised posts externally. Really? Yeah. They'd been, they'd been training justice employees and NPA employees who held LOBs. They trained them internally. Oh, and wow. then there would be district court process. So there isn't like a thing that they 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 publish vacancies every single year for that program. I think I think for the longest time it had been like that. Uh, so I don't know what happened during, during that, that time. Period. Maybe it was budgetary issues, I don't know. Yeah. I'm in no position to say. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but mine was since twenty fifteen they haven't advertised Twenty twenty, when I have an LLB, they advertise. I have to take my chances. Mm. Like I can't not take my chances. No, you had to. You it was I your job, to, girl. I had to. It was your job. <laughs> right? It was yours. Honestly, I was like, mm -mm. the Lord waited for me. Yeah, it was like no way not. So yeah, I mean, I, I took my chances. I applied. Um, yo, the process. <laughs> Please, we want to hear about the process. That's what we care for. It was daunting. Yeah, but if I didn't lose weight and end up in a psych ward that year. Shame. So wait, so you get the, the information from your friend? From a friend, yes. And what is required in the application process? Let's start there. Yeah, so basically, um, you know, for any government job, there's a Z Z83 form that you fill in, mm, right? That one. We know. <sighs> we know. So yeah, you fill in the Z83 form. You yeah. have to be very, very meticulous when you fill it in. You have to pay attention because you can get disqualified for literally making a mistake on the form, mm. not filling it in correctly. I've heard about that, yeah. Um, yeah, but I think if I were to hire a prosecutor who can read properly, then I'd have a problem. <laughs> no, but I, I feel like some of the stuff is like, it's like, I mean, really. Like, if you're gonna fill out, because I know there was, there, there was a, there was someone, there was an issue at some point with someone that I knew that yeah. they filled out the reference number incorrectly. And oh, they disqualified okay. yeah, them that, for that. Bit, they're very finicky like that. I was like, I'm like, you can see I'm applying for this position. Yeah. You can see. Yeah. It's not like, you know, maybe you spelt it completely wrong. wrong yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some of I feel like they just finicky. Use, they use it as a tool just to disqualify people, to be um, completely honest. I, in my view, anyway. if, if, if we look at it from a... Imagine you're an HR, and then there's one position that you guys are advertising yeah. and then you get 20,000 applications. Yeah, that's true. How do you start the eliminating now? You're just like, ah, yeah. mistake. Yeah. You understand? I get, I get so, it. So, yeah, I think it makes life easier for them. I don't mm. know, but mm. yeah, you, you have to be really careful. You have to pay attention. Yeah. Um, they're also very, they're very specific about, okay, you have to obviously attach your qualification. Yes. Um, but do not send more than one application. Yeah. People got disqualified for that because mm. I mean. But I why would you send more than one? Um, with with have you ever applied for a job in government? I have. I've had at the Concord. <laughs> I okay. did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you got it. So yeah. It's fine. <laughs> so yeah. Thank God. <laughs> so basically, people just have this notion that okay, the more applications I send in, the higher mm. the chances my CV will be selected, mm. right? Because we all have this lipstick. Mm, Sorry, we all have this belief that they don't even look at that stuff. Mm. So if it shows up a hundred times, then they're gonna look at it, right? Mm. Wrong. They do look at them. They do look at them. Mm. So this is how some people then got disqualified because they sure. sent in more than one. Imagine you get disqualified just for sending for, for trying that hard. But I get it. <laughs> the, I get it the thing is, the instruction is clear. We yeah. told you you'd get disqualified. Yeah. So when you chose Horindo, I'm just gonna you know do it I mean? anyway. Yeah. Mm. So trust the process, trust the process. Okay. Um, so from there, they start then sending out the rejection emails. Mm -hmm. I mean, like the word rejection. Yo, ish. We've all been there, guys. It hurts. I've all been ish. there. So yeah, they send out the emails to the people who did not get shortlisted to yes. take the exam. Because mm -hmm. you sit for a for an entry exam, mm -hmm. right? So if you did not, if, you're, if basically your CV didn't make it past that point, if... if then they send out emails, no, sorry to inform you, what not, what not. Mm -hmm. At least they don't ghost you. They at least, you. at least. <laughs> and then they start sending out invitations then to write the exam. Okay. But from the moment they tell you that you're qualified to write the exam or that you've been shortlisted to write the exam, you can access the study guide. It's okay. on their website, okay. right? Okay. The study guide is in three parts. There's the law of evidence, there's the criminal procedure act, and then there's criminal law. So mm -hmm. law of evidence is basically just the types of evidence that you use 
probative value of or the weight of the evidence, how it's weighed in court, stuff like that. Mm. Criminal Procedure Act, I mean, it's the criminal the rules, Act. yeah, the Bible, yeah. your daily bread. It's yeah. it's your everything. It guides you basically how to apply certain principles in practice. You know, mm. so yeah, if this happens, then this is what you're supposed to do. Okay, if, yeah, because I mean, even in court, like when you something as easy as postponing a case, you mm. have to say you're postponing it in terms of which section in the sure. procedure act because you don't just people yeah. have rights yeah. guys. like yeah people who commit crimes also have rights mm. so there has to be a procedure mm. you understand mm. Mm. and then the third part is criminal law so basically your specific offenses and the elements basically the stuff that you need to prove beyond a reasonable doubt when okay you go to court. Yeah. okay so this study guide you get so the study guide it's like what's key it's like a course pack where you have to study it to prepare yeah. for the exam just that it's all you need okay. you don't need Past papers, what no, that, that's all just you need. the study guide. Okay, yeah. cool. And you get it on their website, you get it on their website. Okay, cool. So, then when does this happen after you've, you've applied like the exam? When do you sit for the exam? Mm. So, okay, I don't know how it is now, yeah, because I applied during COVID times, mm. so COVID affected a lot of things. Mm. I sent my application in March, the program was supposed to commence in September. Mm. But we only sat for the exam in September mm. because then there was lockdown. Mm. We couldn't like movement was restricted. Also, like the amount of people you could have in a building, mm. stuff like that, right? Um, I think at some point they did consider having a an online exam, mm. but then as the restrictions eased up, then they were like, "No, guys, come in." So essentially, it would if you guys were supposed to start it. September. September. It's like a six months six process, months, basically. but for COVID, obviously. Because COVID. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. then you guys wrote only in September, September the exam, mm. and how was the exam? What is it a uh, like the structure of the exam? Is it what? Is it essays, multiple choice? What is it? Um, so the exam is three hours long. Mm. It doesn't feel like it's enough. I'm telling you. Really? <laughs> Yo, I'm telling you. It only has a hundred questions, mm. multiple choice questions. Multiple choice is the devil. I Honestly, hate multiple in, my, in my opinion, I mm -mm. Uh -uh. I would rather take my chances with English and just English my way yeah, out of that paper. Yeah. So multiple choice, mm. you're either right or you're wrong. Yeah, that's the thing. You, you can't like you know what I mean. So that's why it's important to read. Like you have to read even the questions. Mm. If you panic and then you're gonna miss just one word, changes the meaning of the whole sentence. Mm. So you can miss stuff like that. Mm. But I I wouldn't say that it was difficult mm. i just think that you really need to prepare thoroughly so yeah. i think they do give you ample time though okay from the time you know that you you're going to write the exam to the time that the exam is written i think it's ample time when did you know and when did you write yo i think i knew in april no that's a, that's a lot of time so it's yeah. about what may but remember there was like covid we weren't initially supposed to write in, 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 yeah. in september yeah. so i don't know how it is now yeah for the people who, who who are undergoing the program now but with me, I feel like I had extra time yeah, there, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's it's still ample time. Like the study guide is not that big. It's mm. just obviously you need to like understand you just need to prepare very thoroughly. Prepare, read, read, read. You know, and then mm. also read your questions. Do not panic. So yeah, what made me panic? Then mm. I'm just sharing my experience mm. now because why not? <laughs> what made me panic? So we we're, we're standing in the queue, right, at mm. the venue, we're getting screened, all of that get into the exam hall you know there's no age limit right mm. there's no age restriction so even qualified people people who've been practicing are applying mm. and i'm just mm. like yo what am i doing here i don't advocate mang mang do yeah. i even stand a chance right yeah. so you get into the venue you're about to write your exam so i think she's the tutor of the aspirants she walks in you know the introduction tells you the rules and she's like by the way we're only gonna short list. Just by the way. By the way, yeah, just like by the way, man, mm. you know. So casually, yo. <gasps> we're only gonna shortlist 30 people for interviews. And I'm like And this time there's how many people there? I think I think it was more than a thousand. Nah, I guess. And remember I probably would have just walked out because yo, ah, hey, it's fine. <laughs> and remember there's somebody living in Eastern Cape who applied for Pretoria. There's somebody living in Limpopo who applied for Pretoria. So they're writing at their nearest exam venue, but they're writing for Pretoria. Yeah right pretoria oh guys so yo i know i just felt my heart sink in the yo. moment i was like what even is the point yeah <laughs> but you know it just shows you that when something is meant for you right it will be right. for you yeah if but nothing also, will stop also it. not to underestimate yourself because mm. i think a lot of the times you're just intimidated because you seem like 
people in big suits and mm. be like, yo, they have all of the knowledge that I don't have. Mm. But sometimes you really like that confidence in yourself mm. goes a long way. It does. It Even does. in court, you you can't stand in court if you're not confident. Mm. Mm. So yeah, we wrote the exam. And and for the exam, what do you think is like a good mark to get? Like what, <laughs> the pass mark is too obvious. <laughs> pass mark. But what yeah. is a good mark to say? Okay, Mona, if you get 65, 70, 80, <laughs> then you're like sort of guaranteed. Um, okay. well, not guaranteed, but, that's but a yeah, good, you, you know stand I mean? a better chance, yeah. basically. So, I mean, if you look at the number of people who are vying for the positions, oh. I, I would say 80 up. You stand a good chance, 80 up. So, it, don't just get a distinction, get a distinct distinction. Yo! <laughs> Guys. It's it's attainable though. Yeah. It's attainable. Yeah. It really is. Mm. If you just pay attention and you do what you need to do, mm. you prepare thoroughly. It's attainable. It's mm. it's not that bad. Um if you can survive law contracts, guys, you can survive this. If thing. you can survive our city, I think you Yo, can survive it. You can survive this thing, yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah, so okay, I think cool. because of that, you you really need to get like a, a very good a very mark. good mark. I mean I don't obviously ask what my mark was though. I wouldn't care. Mm-hmm. If I got the job, <laughs> I got the job. I didn't ask So I then mm-hmm. you write the exam and then when do the results come out and when do you find out that you've got the job now? So basically it's not like at school where you write your exam and you wait for your marks, mm-hmm. whatever. No, no. You just how you find out you made it is with that call inviting you to the interview. There's another, there's an interview after There's that. an interview. And <sighs> when I tell you is... that this interview is an oral examination, I'm not joking. They're not going to get there and say, so Titi, tell us about yourself. So what made you choose law? So why should we give you <laughs> no? I no. Know. The process also. No, basically, it's another exam. It's another exam. So they, they want to see if you know your stuff. Basically. So it's, the, it's another exam, but based on the things that you you read in the, ma- the thing, the, the study manual, guide. the study guide. Basically, I, I would say that because mm. they're practical questions. Like they want to see if you know how to identify an offense, how you will mm. go about proving it, stuff like that. Okay. So yeah, it's... it's. And how long is this interview? Oh, it felt like a lifetime for me. I can't remember. <laughs> there, I mean, there was a panel of five. Yo, that's I've never answer. been interviewed by that many people in my life. Yeah. I don't even have, do I even have five friends? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Panel of five. And I think this was only the second interview I had ever attended for a job in mm. my life. Because the first one was my previous job and I mm. got the job. Mm. So then... Now this is my second time attending an interview mm. and there's five people there. And in this interview, okay, find there's five people, my goodness. And when did when did the interview come after the exam? It was a month. Okay, so a exam. month, okay, that's a not month. bad. That's yeah. not bad. Okay. A month after the exam. So this is around October now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. October. Okay. So yeah, I mean, they actually do give you like a, a notebook and a pen. And a glass of water there because they know it's rough. They know. They, I think, but I think it's fair. They yeah. give you a fair chance because some of us really we need to put our thoughts on paper first mm, in order for them to make sense, mm. right? So then you do the interview, yeah. And how do you leave feeling? Do you feel like I'm I've got this job or I got it's fine if I don't get it? <laughs> I left that interview feeling so hopeless. Like I'm really, yo, I felt I felt like I was chewing on my words. I felt like. You know when you get an afterthought, like yeah. you just like, I should have said, said this. Yes. Yo. Those are the words. Yeah. So 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 I had a lot of that. Mm. Um yo, I remember I got home and I just cried and I called my dad. I was like, hey, Papa, no, ah, didn't no, work. And my dad is so calm. Yeah. My dad is I think I think he has a lot of faith in me, mm. maybe. Like, yo, that that man. <laughs> he was just like, relax. Mm. Like you've got this. You were interviewed by a panel of how many? Oh, okay. No, relax, calm down, you'll be no. fine. No, you'll be fine. You You're, did fine. I'm yeah. telling you, you did fine. I'm like, okay, Shab, he's the originator. If he says I did fine, yeah, I did fine. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, so now the waiting time from the interview until basically finding out if you made it or not, mm. that was also a very daunting period. So this is now you interview again, October. October. Okay, cool. So when do you And this is, I think, out? mid-October. I think mm-hmm. the 11th or 12th of October. I only found out in December. Oh, I would have given up by then. From sending the application in Feb 
Guys, it's been a year to, <laughs> to apply for a job. Finding out in December. I don't think it normally takes that long. I but think still, COVID, that took long. Yeah, it did. It really did take long. Yo, it took long. Yo, it took and what so did they long. do? Did they call you? Did they send you an email? So they send you an email and then they call you to make sure you got, you got it. Mm. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, no, when they want you, they make sure almost. They can mm. call you to pull up on the email, yo. right? So yeah, it's it, yo. But it was such a, a huge relief. Mm. Like the feel, I remember that feeling very well. It was a very huge relief. Mm. But yeah. The fact that it took eight months didn't even matter anymore. Yeah. Like you Because you got the job. Right. You got the job. That's what mattered. Yeah. So then you get the job and they tell you in December when is your like day one of work? January. When 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 did we go back? I think the third of January. So basically the first working day in January. Mm -hmm. That was my first day. As an aspirant prosecutor. So that's the What does that mean? You're aspiring to be a yeah. prosecutor. You start a training. training. It's a training, the training yeah. okay. And you okay. do it for a year. Okay. So the bulk of it is is it's it's learning actually mm. throughout. Because I remember the first I think for the first four months we didn't even set foot in a courtroom. Mm. Like we went to observe and stuff like that, but what we mostly did was like coursework, exams, writing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And then we did mock trials, obviously. You did exams within the program? Yes. Okay, tests. Okay. But, they, but did they mock those? Like They mock them. <laughs> Guys, this program. <laughs> but I think it's it's good to get that thorough training mm. from the get-go. Mm. Um, so that once you go to court, you know your stuff. You will know everything. Yeah. We learn every day. I feel like when you do law, you know you're a student for life. Yeah, that's Like true. you're a student forever. Nobody knows everything. Mm. Like there's no way. Mm. Also, the law is breathing. There's always going to be changes. There's always going to be growth and development. So you can't tell you know everything, mm. right? Yeah. So then the four, first four months, you're like learning. And then what are you doing after that uh, for the rest of the year? Because you're saying the, yeah. the year is the training, Yeah, right? the, the training is here. So... There's the coursework then for the first four months. You mm. do a mock trial to see if you basically know how to call a case, how to mm. place appearances on record, how to conduct mm. the trial, how to lead evidence, you know, what to look out for, mm. how to cross-examine, stuff mm. like that. Mm. You you basically learn that. And then you start going to court now. There's obviously a resident prosecutor in the court. Mm a district court prosecutor. So mm. there's a district court prosecutor, then there's a regional court prosecutor because mm. there's a district court and a regional yes, court. Yes, yes. So the district court is a lower one. Mm-hmm. So we deal with like your theft, your assault, yeah. that stuff. And then in the regional court, that's where they deal with the more serious offenses, mm. where they where they impose the more harsher sentences. Yes, yes. yes. So everybody starts on the district, district level. Okay. Yes. okay. So yeah, we, we shadow them, then we learn how basically how they prepare the role every day mm. what 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 do you do like before you go to court what must be in your possession what must you do how do you know what's happening in this case and mm. stuff like that um then we go to court we start with doing postponements basically so you know like in a criminal matter you don't just like get someone arrested today and then they get sentenced today yeah yeah there's a whole process Mm. so investigations need to be conducted Mm. that's when that's what we refer to as postponements Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. if maybe it was an offense that involved a firearm you need a ballistic report yes so you'll postpone for that Mm. so you basically postpone until you have the people always complaining i don't need to postpone yeah yeah, right yeah Yeah. guys people don't understand people don't understand shame (laughs) a criminal case yo it's very mm. difficult to prove. Mm. It's very difficult to prove. So it, it hurts when you see people. Okay, I used to be one of them. Mm. The justice system is failing us once you're in there. Mm. But at least I tried to get in there to make a difference. Yes, there, right? yes, yes. Which is, once you're in there. Which is what you're doing, mm. you know? Yeah. Once you're in there, you see that, okay, it takes a lot of work. Mm. It takes a lot. So, yeah, we we then we would shadow them. We did postponements. Then you learn how to do a bail application. Okay. You learn how to handle a guilty plea mm. you also do a trial mm. right so yeah with the bail applications they're also different mm. there are cases where you can just fix bail at the first appearance mm. if the person doesn't have like a criminal record like previous convictions yes i get over to a criminal record mm. so, <laughs> <laughs> previous convictions yeah yeah and then there are bail applications that have to be done formally yeah so 
when somebody's been murdered and the community is like, we saw him, we know this person killed this person. Mm. That doesn't automatically mean the person won't get bail. Yes. They have to show that it's in the interest of justice that they get bail. Because mm. bail is not punishment. It's just an issue. Yeah, Hore. We, we, we're ensuring that you're going to keep coming. You're going to come back to court. You can't yes. afford to lose this money. Yes. So you're going to keep coming to court until mm. the matter's finalized. Right? Okay. okay. So yeah, you learn about that stuff. And um, just out of my own interest, the money that you pay for bail, if you're found guilty, do you get it back? So once the case is finalized, yeah, yeah um, usually you don't pay your own bail. So you'll find or someone else will pay it somebody for you. Oh, for okay. you. So they come with the receipt and the ID. And okay. Get whether their whether you get convicted or not, they okay. get their money back. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, where were we? <laughs> so yeah, what we do, or what? Yeah, during that period, the, the, the remainder then of the period, you're just going to court doing what a prosecutor does. Basically. Okay, and so once that period that the program is over, the following year, now you're on your own, basically. Um, first you have to you have to firstly get absorbed. They'll tell you, okay, you made it. So wait, that that <laughs> year is like still like. You, they determining whether they want you or not. I get it. They have to. They have to see if you're coping. They have to see if you can prosecute. They have to see if there's potential there. You you it's don't like have articles. to be perfect. Basically, it's like articles. Basically, you don't have to be perfect, but we must see that okay, we can work. <laughs> I feel like it's articles because articles are like a two year interview, guys. This is All right. Yes. So it's like yeah, but I mean, so at the end of it, they say to you, "We love you. We're keeping you." Yeah. Or this is not working out. I haven't heard of someone who didn't make it though. Oh, okay. I don't know. Okay. I, I haven't heard of mm. anyone who didn't make it. I was it. like, ha, guys, <laughs> after all you've been through. No, the thing is, remember, they also invest in your skill. Mm. They invest in, in, yeah. And then this training that you, you do, you get paid, right? Yes. Okay. 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 Like, would, do you get paid like how you would get paid as a, as a prosecutor or is it like a stipend kind of thing? It's... It's not article stipend, yeah. but it's, it's a stipend. Okay, okay, I yeah. hear you, I hear you. But what I'm asking is that when, you, when, when you're when now a district public prosecutor, not in the program anymore, yeah. the money does, does the, is the money the same or, no. or it goes up? It goes okay, up. No, that's what I wanted to understand. Okay, yeah. I see. All right, so you do the program, they keep you, and now you are the big boss. Okay, not the big boss, but you're, you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> yeah. you are the person that is supposed to now do. We can train others now basically take you i don't train people it's, it's like we're all learning man mm. now i look at it like that mm. we're, we're all on an equal footing we're all learning yeah and yeah so now yes i i'm the resident prosecutor in mm. my court now mm. and yeah and and just out of my own interest again what 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 does the career prospects looks like like you know for example go firm it's you ca associate, associate senior yeah. With you, yeah. it's district public prosecutor, and then what? Then, and then what? Then regional court yes. prosecutor, and then you can apply for state advocacy. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's there's different routes. There, there are different routes. Through. There are different routes. If you want to do pupillage and go into private practice, you can do that. Mm. So you won't be a prosecutor anymore. Yes. You'll be an advocate. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So there's different routes. So maybe just as a as a as a final question. Um, what do you? Do, what do, I want to know. What do you do every day now that you are a district public prosecutor? You're out of the program. If I say, what does your typical day look like? What do you get to okay. work and do at eight a.m. or nine a.m. whatever time? Seven forty-five. Seven forty-five. Look at that. Seven forty-five. I would never. So I wake up at this time. Before I knock off, mm. I prepare the following day's role. Mm. So basically, I get the charge sheets. Chart sheet is basically the document that you use to bring a person to court. Yeah. That's the record of the proceedings, mm. right? I prepare that. I see what happened in the previous appearance. Mm. So I know why we're here today. Mm -hmm. Then I have the, the, so for every chart sheet, there's a case docket, right? Because mm -hmm. that's where the evidence is. So then I peruse the dockets, make sure that I have all the information that I need. Mm. If maybe I knocked off shot like up docket Z2 or whatever, mm. there's still outstanding dockets. I will get them the following morning, mm. prepare my role. Um I I I sometimes speak to my magistrate just to discuss what the role looks like. Mm. So I'll tell him maybe we have 15 cases on the road today. Um we have two formal bail applications, we have a guilty plea maybe mm. and yeah here's what it what it's looking like. Mm -hmm. Nine o'clock court starts. Yeah. Yeah. Then we will adjourn for tea, we will adjourn for lunch, 
we're not done. And then in the interim, yeah, you get you get a lot of like community members because prosecutors are people's lawyers. We deal mm. with people. Mm. So you'll get like community members who will come to your office, they need advice. This person did this, how do I go about that? Do you mm. understand? Um Okay, we also have a control prosecutor and a senior prosecutor. I think I skipped those steps with the career prospects, the Mm -hmm. growth. There's a control prosecutor and a senior prosecutor as well. Mm. So if maybe he needs assistance with screening first appearances, so dockets that just came in, Mm. you have to decide if they're going on the roll or not. Mm. right? And how do you make that decision? Is there sufficient evidence linking this person? Like, can we say Mm. that the identity of the perpetrator is indeed this person? Mm. If there's sufficient evidence linking this person and there's enough basically to say that, oh, yeah, Mm. Yeah. then you can place it on the roll. But sometimes there's really nothing. Like, somebody can say, no, an unknown male, I identified him because he was wearing a red beanie. How many people were wearing Mm. red beanies? You understand? Mm. Stuff like that. Yeah. And then... Yeah, when, when once you're done in court, you do your daily stats. Mm. So that's basically how many hours you spent in court, how how many cases did you finalize, mm. stuff like that. Mm. And then, yeah, you know. Hope. But I'm just wondering, like, do you get, so you, when you prepare the role, these, are these your cases that you deal with, that you're going to deal with until, if they do get to trial? Yeah. Is it yours <laughs> or do you get something different every day? Like where they say another prosecutor did the three postponements and then you come in and then yeah. you do continue and then someone else is gonna do a trial. How yeah. does it work in that way? So basically and a lot of a lot of people actually have this notion that like they will say case it's where it went. Like you you're the one who's responsible for that case. Mm. You know, if you're a prosecutor, whatever case is there, it's your case. If you're a prosecutor, whatever case is there. So basically if my colleague Yeah I work in court B. Yeah. She works in court A. Yeah. She goes on leave. I run court A's role. There's no, there's no such mm. thing as no because you did this on the first appearance. Then mm. that you run with it until, until it gets the to end. Now. And also, how our court works is we will get the the more serious cases and stuff. We'll do the bail applications in our court in mm. the district court. So once they're ready for trial, we transfer them to the regional court. Mm. So they they just... But then, doesn't that, like... I feel like, how do you then deal with the workload of dealing with different things every day? Like, isn't that a lot? It is, but you deal. Like, you get used to it, eh? Yo, guys. You <laughs> I'm stressed when I have 10 matters running at the same time. Really? <laughs> like, what's happening here? No, I mean, you get used to it. The thing is... I get it, you're not going to run all of the trials on the same day. Like, yeah. you're not going to do every single thing on the same day. So, with the postponements, you just need to know what's happening with your docket. Read your dockets. That's why it's important mm. to them. Prepare the day before. Mm. So that the next day when you come, you remember what's happening in this docket. There will be some things that just arise. Like, for example, something wasn't diarized. You didn't know the case was coming in today. Mm. But you still need to peruse that docket. And, I mean, yeah. magistrates magistrates are good people, man. They, like, they chilled. You can tell them, look, your worship, can you please adjourn for five minutes? I just need to read the stock hit and like familiarize myself with the contents. Okay. So yeah, that's allowed. You can literally adjourn, get your house in order, hmm. and then continue. Phew, that's your no, yeah. I, yeah, no, I, I'm actually glad that I'm not a prosecutor. <laughs> it seems like it's a lot of work. <laughs> it is, it is, but it's a very rewarding job, man. Yeah. Like it's, it's very nice. It's very nice. It's, it's, Phew, but it seems like it's a lot. It's a lot. There's also child justice court. Mm. Mm. So we do that as well. So on the days when, so I alternate with my colleague, right? Mm. So I'll be in court on Monday, then she goes in on Tuesday. Mm. On the days when I'm not in court and there's a child justice case, then I would handle the child justice case. Meaning what? What is child justice court? So child justice court deals with um, minor offenders. So offenders younger than 18 years. Mm. Um, basically where the child is the person who committed the crime. Mm. Yes. Mm. So, yeah, mostly... Mostly the aim of, of the Child Justice Act is to divert them away from the criminal justice system. Mm. So, yeah, it's 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 not as hectic as in the but criminal But what court. kind of crimes do you see there that's committed by under 18-year-olds? <laughs> um, okay, shoplifting obviously is very popular. Mm. But the most popular of the serious offenses is rape. Yeah. As we've got a serious problem in this country. Yeah, we do. But like children are exposed to a lot of nonsense. They're exposed to. But I mean, as a, as a fifteen year old, if you're raping someone, 
by 13. Year old, so. What are you doing? It's very concerning. Hey? It's, it's, it's very scary. Concerning. Yeah. So, but this is also part of what makes this job so rewarding because you're not just obsessed with convicting and proving that you did wrong and whatever. You also look at avenues that can be taken to assist this person so that he can be an upstanding citizen. And do they work? So they do. Sure. Well, if you work the program, then the program works for you, mm. basically. Yeah. Mm. I hear you. Sure. Okay. This was a very enlightening but also quite a heavy interview. <laughs> like, if I was sitting and I wanted to be a prosecutor, I'd be very scared right now. I'm joking. <laughs> but it just Don't scare it's, the people. No, but it's, 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 it seems like, I think maybe my perception is that, you know, we think government workers, I have a very give out, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? Mm. And it's like, it's so refreshing to see, especially when you hear it from someone that does it on a daily basis, could see, guys we actually work because we yeah. what we see on the outside is people knocking off at one o'clock and <laughs> and and you're like how <laughs> <laughs> how how you guys chase it but yeah. there's work that gets done outside of yeah. being in court do you know what i mean yeah and i don't think people see that people just see if you're there from nine to one they count the hours and they're like these people don't work <laughs> yeah. and it's good to see a different and understand yeah. Yeah. what actually goes behind um, and also, I think for me, what's encouraging is uh, the fact that people, you know, that that notion that okay, there's no point to apply for a government job if you don't have yeah. people connections. Yeah. And it's good that you didn't have connections. No. You applied like everybody else, yeah. and you got in uh, on merit. On merit, which is really, really honestly, yeah. I don't think anyone can get into prosecution through connections. I don't know, yeah. but for me personally, I think honestly, it's fair play. Mm. The ad the adverts, everything is just fair play. They communicate with you. They invest in the skill. You know, mm. it's fair play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. No, but um, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and I really hope someone out there that didn't consider prosecution or didn't consider other avenues is going to think start. Qualified. Yeah, it's going to start looking into those opportunities because I really do think that we need to move away from the notion that success only looks like. Um, large offices in Santon yeah. and in Rosebank and wherever. Mm. Um, successes can be defined in whatever way you want success to be defined. And I think your story is one of that to show people that it's important to consider other avenues. I, I wish I, now I'm just like, I, I, you know, like your career is like what I wanted to do as a lawyer. Initially. <laughs> Initially, like I wanted to be sitting in court. Yeah. But I do believe that God works in ways that we will never understand. Definitely. And Definitely. there's a reason why we are at we are, we are where we are at the time that we are but thank you uh, thank you so thank much you thank me. you that was very very um inspirational one but also very informative and i think that was the purpose of this video yeah to inform yeah. and just good luck I'm, I'm saying good luck because i know people are going to message you honey <laughs> shame i already had like a few people messaging me and i really don't I told you. i think if you where you can empower empower mm. i mean mm. i'm one person who like I said in the beginning, not having that information can make you feel very powerless. Mm. So at least when somebody has information and they see that hey, and it's not that bad, mm. then they can actually, you know, do the things that need to be done. So yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Messages. They will message you. I know they will. My, my <laughs> people are, are consistent with that. <laughs> yeah. But thank you so much, guys, for watching. Uh, thank you for being patient with me. Uh, <laughs> with, with As my... part of the notification <laughs> gang, you are welcome. <laughs> Thank you for being patient with me. I hope you that welcome. when you do get notifications, it's worthwhile notifications and not just, you know? It's um, never just though. Exactly. <laughs> I take my time to produce content, right. guys. So I take my time. Take time. Exactly, take exactly. Time. Take it from uh, me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But thank you guys for watching. And for those that are just watching and not subscribing, like i'm confused uh oh, I mean. like why why <laughs> so please subscribe please like please share this video i think it's going to be very helpful to and i think that's why we put on youtube is because we we knew yeah. that it needs to reach a much broader audience mm. than just instagram and i think that it's going to be able to do that um so please share it on all your social media platforms so that people can know okay if you over -over, district public prosecutor here is here is the perfect you example. Can. Here is the perfect like, example. You can. Exactly. But thank you <laughs> for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for all your support. I really, really appreciate it. And with that, it is goodbye.